What's up, guys? I'm Evan Brewer, and I um, just wanted to join up here with Bass Frontiers Magazine to talk to you guys a little bit about myself. I've been playing bass for a long time. I don't even really remember when I started. Probably when I was like 13 or 14 years old. Just got inspired by a lot of great bass players, because at that time, you could hear really great bass players on the radio. You know, there was all these guys like Flea and Les Claypool that were doing stuff. They were in the popular bands of the time and they were doing stuff so you could hear it on the radio so it just makes you want to really play you know it showed me from the very beginning you know what you could do with bass was uh, a lot more than what most people did so from the very beginning of playing bass I always approached it like one of those guys and I wanted to take it really far you know and so I always aspired to do that I mean I, I guess the ceiling was raised up very high from the beginning for me you know I didn't ever really want to be conventional bass player so to speak so I've always approached it from like a solo standpoint first and then gravitated towards you know being the foundation of a band and understanding the role of a bass player almost second so it's a reverse way to approach playing bass but you know from approaching it that way I quickly learned about a lot of the guys that are from my hometown Nashville Tennessee where I grew up and I just uh, quickly learned that there was a wealth of knowledge here to be had so Got hooked up with the Wooten brothers, mainly Reggie Wooten, who's the main teacher of the five brothers. And um, man, he's become a really good friend throughout the years, and he's taught me so much. And just being around those guys sets the bar extremely high. So you don't ever even really have uh, constraints or walls or a ceiling on what you aspire to do musically. And that's the main thing I try to tell everybody. You know, you always want to just shoot for the most outlandish thing you can possibly do you know so you know my goal have always been to see how far I could take my instrument because all I want to really be able to do is just uh, exceed that you know and as you keep playing you know you learn how to be a bass player you know be the foundation of a band keep it simple you learn the time and place for everything you do but to stay excited, you know, after all these years of playing bass, to stay excited and inspired, you have to find, you know, new ways to kind of push the instrument. That's my main goal. And I just want to be able to inspire people the way people have inspired me. You know, I've traveled in a lot of different bands, um, playing on the road and just seeing what, you know, high levels of musicianship can do. When people are really stretching and trying, you know, to really do something interesting on their instrument and push that art, it's very inspiring to people who don't even play the instrument. And I remember, and I still feel that all the time when I see great players play. It's just a fantastic thing to experience. So my whole goal with music at this point is just to really kind of give back to that. You know, all that inspiration that was fed to me. If I can inspire one person, that's my only real goal. Not really in it for money or anything like that. I just want to advance the the instrument itself because this instrument, the electric bass, has not even really been around very long. So we don't even really know what can be done with it. So we're still learning all those things. This bass is a. It's just a, one of the really old lake ones. Like I don't even know the serial number pertains but it's like 200 and something so I mean it's you know they were a young company when and man this thing is it's all beat up you know it's but it's just the one I think every every bass player has the one bass that they seem to gravitate to and I play a lot of different basses I play six string five strings tuned all different ways but I feel like I can do more on this one four string bass because it's been the one I've always played. It's what I really cut my teeth on. You know, I had a precision bass when really young and then I got this and this kind of became the main deal. And ever since it's just been the main main bass, man. It's all beat up and you know, it's got its scars, but man, it's just the one I pick up. That Bartolini preamp in there is really what gives me that sound. The highs are just, they're not harsh but they're very present and then as far as mid-range you can do you can do some the mid-range can bark you know and you can get really nice smooth R&B tones I haven't found really a tone I can't really get with this bass between you know effects pedals and what's on board what I like about it too is any situation I get in like I come here I'm playing through an amp it's not necessarily my amp but because of the way that active electronics are structured and things, it retains its own sound. That's what I like about it. I can plug straight into a PA with this, and 
I've still got my sound because really this bass's sound is kind of my sound. That's just how it's come to be. I mean, you know, I mean, it's definitely got a certain sound. The frets are totally worn in. You know, the necks. Necks probably about had it. <laughs> you know, the frets are flat. I uh, couldn't even tell you how many hours I've spent on this bass, but. As an instrumentalist, when you get on that one instrument, you know, no matter how many you have, when you get on your favorite one, there's something magical about that. It brings you back to when you were just like a, a kid, you know, and you were playing and you, because, you know, ultimately my whole goal with music is to never lose that feeling that I had when I was a kid, when I was playing. That super inspired feeling, when you have everything to learn. It's not hard to get better when you have everything to learn, but it gets hard to get better when you've learned a lot and you've got to actively seek out inspiration and seek out new things to learn. But that's the beauty of music. I mean, that's why I think music is something, you know, it's a true art. It's something you can do your whole life and never master. There's no such thing as mastering music. You'll always be a student. And if you ever stop learning, you're pretty much cooked. So 